Welcome to 25 and Broke, where I teach you how to stop being broke financially, socially, physically, and spiritually so that you can stop being a wuss and start being a winner. Today we're discussing, is a quarter life crisis real? Is a quarter life crisis real? You know, I came across this term not too long ago, actually, and I was like, who's complaining about a quarter life crisis, right? So you're 25 years old, and I get it. Some of you feel like a failure. Uh, you feel like, man, I'm not where I want to be. Uh, by this time in my life, I thought I would be past this, right? Uh, I'm out of college. I graduated. I'm, I'm not making a million dollars a year yet. I don't have that awesome house with that fancy sports car in the driveway and my boats and that smoking hot, beautiful wife. You know, I just don't have all these things going on yet, and I feel like a loser. Well, you shouldn't, right? Your expectations are too high. Let me ask you a question. How many 25-year-olds do you know, personally, that have all those things? How many? Right now. Go ahead. I'll wait. One? Two? Ten? I doubt you even have one, right? Because very few of us know a 25-year-old guy who has all those things, is happy, is successful, right? Uh, has all the material possessions, is joyful, right, is faithful, a man of God, etc., right, and he's got his life all put together at age 25. How could you seriously think about this, right? You just got out of college. You've been putting good stuff in, right? So now it's time to start putting good stuff out into the world, adding value to others. Well, that takes time. Right? You have to add value to others for years before it pays off. That's just how the world works. Right? I, other episodes I talk about to become an expert at anything. You have to put in 10,000 hours of time at that craft, practicing it and getting better so that you add enough value to others that they want to compensate you for you, compensate you for it, and you start to rake in the rewards of adding value to others. That takes years of your life. Okay, so I can relate to this one for, you know, the uh, quarter-life crisis. I definitely can relate. The term is a little interesting, I think, but, um, you know, when I was 25, here's what was happening in my life. I was on vacay for, like, five years. I had some good money from my first businesses, and, uh, you know, I was out, you hear me say, you know, uh, Scottsdale uh, a lot in these episodes because that was the party years, man. That's five years of my life. I just partied hard um, and and worked at, like jobs for fun, like I said uh, in previous episodes. I just wanted to try new things. But there I was, right? I had everything that I kind of wanted, man. I had uh, cars. I had uh, money in my pocket, um, like a lot to spend and I was out at nightclubs four nights a week, yeah, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday night, and sometimes other days of the week, and literally up on stage dancing and, and just partying with all these girls. I had girls, 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 lots of beautiful girls at that time in my life, and you know, I don't say that to, to be brag to brag in any way. I'm just explaining. I had all those things that I thought would bring me happiness and joy, and all those things that you're chasing right now. You are chasing these things, and and what I found was it was in that time of my life when I had what every guy kind of wants and is chasing. That was when I was the loneliest. That was when I was the most insecure. That was when I was the most depressed, down in the dumps, man. Just like that was when I came the closest to having like thoughts of like suicide and stuff in my life, you know. And and thank God for my faith, even though I wasn't living it back then. I I grew up, you know, in in a Christian home, and I had that faith of of eternity. And you know, I never really, you know. Uh, took those thoughts any further than random thoughts of like, you know, just ending it all. 
um, because the pain, the, like what's the point of being here, right, on this planet? What am I even meant to do? It's like, why am I here? You know, this sucks. I'm empty. I'm alone. Um, I'm broken, right? And uh, just not where I wanted to be in life at age 25, even though I had all the things that the world says makes us happy. Well, society, the media, it's a lie. They lie to us so that we chase it. Because when we chase it, we buy things. And when we buy things, certain individuals get rich. So, you know, these were the lonely times. I remember specifically, I'll go here, I'll get humble and vulnerable with you. Um, because, listen, this is how we learn from each other, right? So let me share this. Uh, it got so bad in Scottsdale at the end of that five-year vacation um, and partying like a rock star, I had nothing, literally nothing. I was stripped of everything, and it was it was really uncanny how it happened because it was like uh, all of a sudden I found myself uh, completely tapped out, all my money spent, everything, empty bank accounts, right, completely to nothing. And then I, uh, uh, yeah, my uh, I lost all my friends. Um, they just disowned me. Turns out they weren't really my friends. They were just acquaintances who were kind of using me to hang out and party and live that lifestyle with me. And then I, I lost uh, the place where I lived. Um, my girlfriend, smoking hot model girlfriend, brunette, gorgeous, um, she uh, dumped me on my birthday. And to wrap this all up, this all happened. All those four things I just mentioned, losing all these different areas of my life, all happened within a two-week time frame, a two-week period. I don't know why that happened, but it just happened. And I and there I was, like, in shock. Like, I got no woman. I got no car. I got no money, right? Like that song, you got no money, you got no car, you got no woman, so there you are, right? Well, that's that was me. I had nothing, and I was just broken, alone, and I'm out in, you know, the, the West Coast with nobody who cares for me. And, man, I had some bad, bad, scary thoughts. Let me just say that. And I know you have. Uh, you know, some of you guys out there, you have some dark thoughts, man, that makes you just want to quit and give up. And I'm just saying don't, right? And and here's why is I, I left it all behind. I had to s sell the, the few things that I had um, just to get gas money. Uh, in the one little car that I, I still owned, uh, just to drive across the country, right? To come to, to Tampa, Florida. Um, so everything I had was in that little car and in the gas tank. Uh, think about that for a second. That was, that sucked. That was a sucky part of my life, man. Um, but here's the lesson I learned and here's the lesson for today's episode is that God uses the good, the bad, the ugly, and the beautiful to prepare you for his perfect plan for your life. And there is a plan for your life. So just if you're in the, the darkness right now, don't believe that light doesn't exist out there. Light exists. You're being prepared. You're being groomed. You're being molded. The good, the bad, the ugly, and the beautiful God uses to prepare you for his perfect plan for your life. That's what he did for me. I'm happier than ever, truly, inside and out. I have more going on than ever, and I love my life, and it's a blessing. So I wish the same for you. I'm Joseph Warren, and you were made for greatness. So stop being a wuss and start being a winner. Catch you tomorrow. Peace.